Welcome, Grade 12, to the public sector. The public sector is basically the government. The government has three levels. There's a national level. This is where the laws and the legislations of the country, they are made, for example, in parliament. But the national government also runs certain portfolios, for example, defense, uh, our soldiers, and also policing, uh, SAPs, the national uh, government is in charge of those portfolios. Let's look at the second one, provincial government. Now, provincial government, uh, these are different provincial departments. Uh, here we use education as an example. Uh, each province in South Africa will have its own education department. Gauteng, for example, has the Gauteng Education Department and the Gauteng Education Department will basically be in charge for the education in Gauteng. All right, and the last level of government, uh, the lower level, is the local level. These are the districts and the municipalities. They're in charge of services such as street lighting or garbage collection. Moving on. All right, so there are three types of public goods, community goods and collective goods. Now, community goods and collective goods are similar in that they are non-rival in consumption. Both community goods and collective goods are non-rival in consumption. What this means is that more than one person can use uh, these goods at the same time, right? So more than one person can use the same public good at the same time. The difference between the community goods and the collective goods is in the excludability. Uh, now, community goods are non-excludable. You cannot exclude anyone from using the community goods. Uh, whereas, uh, for collective goods, you can exclude free riders. Free riders can be excluded. Free riders are basically people that use the goods, but they don't want to pay for them. So, for community goods such as street lighting, uh, you cannot exclude anyone. Even if people don't pay for these goods, they can still use them. But for collective goods, free riders can be excluded. So people that don't want to pay for the goods, they can be excluded. For example, certain parks you need to pay to get in, and that's the same for museums. Certain museums you need to pay a fee to get in. Now, that fee excludes uh, free riders. So that's the main difference between the community goods and collective goods. The last one, the merit goods, is easy to understand. If you get a merit award, that means you've done good, right? So uh, these are goods and services that benefit society. Services, goods and services such as health and education that benefit society. Those are merit goods. All right, uh, nationalization and privatization. Uh, starting with privatization, it's easy to understand privatization. The business becomes private. That's what privatization is. Um, state-owned, it was previously owned by the state, but now it becomes private. Nationalization is just the opposite of privatization. It, uh, the business that, that was owned privately now is owned by the state. All right, so that's the difference between the two. One is just the opposite of the other. Now, parastatals are state-owned enterprises that provide public goods and services. Uh, a parastatal example would be ESCOM because ESCOM provides electricity uh, to the citizens of the country. All right, let's look at budgeting. There are two types of budgets. We've got the main budget. This budget is presented annually in Feb by the Minister of um, Finance once every year, and this budget will be for the next financial year. Uh, now remember, the financial year of the country starts on the 1st of March until the end of Feb the next year. So the Minister of Finance will present the budget for the next financial year. The medium-term expenditure framework, this one is a three-year budget also presented by the Minister of Finance, but uh, this one is presented every three years, um, whereas the main budget is presented every year. Where does government get most of its income from? 
mostly from personal income tax followed by VAT and then corporate tax and then customs and excise taxes. Uh, and then government mostly spends its income on learning and culture, social development, paying for debt, health, peace and security, and so forth. All right, the government deficit, uh, the word deficit means shortage. So if there's a government deficit, what this means is that the government does not have enough. The expenditure is more than the income. So the government might need to borrow some, uh, some money in order to cover the deficit uh, so that all the needs of the country are met. A surplus is just the opposite of a deficit. A government surplus means that the income uh, is more than the expenditure. So when there's a surplus, there's enough. So the government has more than enough income to cover its expenditure. All right, let's look at some taxation terms. Um, the first one is the progressive tax system. This is the tax system we have in, this, in South Africa. In South Africa, the more money you earn, the more tax you will pay. All right? Pay. You pay as you earn. Other countries have a regressive tax system. Uh, the more you earn, the less you pay. All right? So uh, it depends on uh, the system that the country adopts. The term value-added tax, VAT, is basically tax on, on goods and services that we all buy. The, we all pay VAT. So when we buy something at the shop, our VAT is already included in most of those items. Excise duties. Excise, these are the demerit goods, goods that are not good for society. The government charges taxes uh, on those goods, goods such as uh, tobacco or alcohol. Finally, the last term we're going to look at is the tax evasion. Tax evasion is when someone illegally avoids paying tax. And SARS can execute, uh, prosecute those people uh, who illegally avoid paying tax. All right, uh, then the last thing we're going to look at in this video is the Laffer curve. Uh, and the rationale behind the Laffer curve is that people will only be willing to pay tax up at a, a certain point. For this graph, that point is E, right? The graph uh, is increasing, indicating that the government is getting tax revenue, uh, is increasing and increasing up until point E. After point E, it starts decreasing, meaning the government gets lesser and less tax revenue. So people will only be willing to pay tax up until a certain point. So let's just go through set, uh, a few examples. Let's say the government, remember at point A, the tax is, uh, is zero, the tax rate is zero, but the tax revenue is also zero. All right? So if the government should then increase the tax rate to 25% to point B, they will get 90 billion. So they'll, they'll get a lot of money if the tax rate is 25%. Let's say now the government decides to increase tax even further to 50% to point E. People will still pay tax. You see the revenue will still increase, even though it's, it's increasing at a decreasing rate, which means that some people are no longer willing to pay tax. That's why the curve from point B to point E is increasing at a decreasing rate. But once you reach point E, then you see that the curve starts going down, meaning that the tax revenue starts to decrease. So the government starts to make less and less money because some people are not willing to pay tax. So people, uh, maybe some people would be moved, will move to a different country or some people would rather start their own businesses. Uh, they will not be willing to pay tax anymore. And if the government continues to increase taxes, let's say maybe from 75 to 100%, then eventually no one will be paying any tax. So that's what the Laffer curve shows you. It shows you the relationship between the tax rate and the tax revenue. So basically, as the tax rate increases, uh, the tax revenue will also start to decrease up until a certain point, after which people will no longer be willing to uh, pay tax. 
Alright, I hope this video was useful. Thank you very much, Great Falls.